Recording. All right, back into Tunes Brothers, back into Kiss and Scotty. What do we got going? First of all, that's Darren, that's Scott. You know us all. Uh, Scott, what do we got going? Uh, we got the number two studio album today from <coughs> Kiss, man. We got Rock and Roll Over, we got Destroyer, we got Love Gun, man. We're picking our 12 tracks off of those three absolutely perfect studio albums. And we're making our second, our sophomore Kiss album, man. Off of those tracks, we're starting it out like we want it, and so on and so forth, like we did the first album. We're going to make it flow the way we like it with the songs that we choose for our perfect sophomore kiss album. And I forgot, um, the first album is just kiss, right? So you can take one of these titles off of these destroyer rock and roll over love gun and I'll put it on your album. Bingo. If you want. To. All right. Uh, Darren, how'd you do with this? Um, I think I did pretty well. I mean, obviously I'm not, uh, I mean, I'm familiar with most of, most of these albums. Um, uh, unfortunately I'm not going to have a ton of notes because I listened to most of this while I was at the park with my daughter. So I was able to at least track which songs I liked the best and put them in an order. Um, but I'm not going to have a ton of notes as to what really stood out to me. I mean, some of these songs I've enjoyed for a very long time. I think there's a handful in here that might surprise people. Um, again, I try, I try to stay away from the songs that to me were overplayed, especially in their live shows and live albums and compilation albums. You just get tired of some of those um, after a long time. Yeah, we're right there There's with no, you. You ain't going to pull any punches on a Kiss album remake, man. It ain't going to be surprising, to be honest with you, dude. Uh, they, all these songs on these albums, uh, on this second round of Kiss albums, to me, you, I don't... I, <laughs> they might be one or two I ain't crazy about, but I love all three of them. So that's just me. <clears throat> yeah. All right, Scott. Side one, track one. Side one, track one. I'm starting my Kiss Rock and Roll Over album. That's what I'll call mine, I guess. Um, I'm going to start it off with Detroit Rock City. That's going to be my leadoff track for my sophomore album. I couldn't. I could have went with it. There's a lot of good tracks that I picked and a lot of good on these second round of Kiss albums, man. It could have been great lead-off tracks, man. I mean, damn, they had a lot of lead-off tracks. Really, it wasn't lead-off tracks, but they could have been. Uh, not hard to put together, but damn hard to absolutely leave off some songs. Oh, 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 oh no. <laughs> I drink to that. Yeah, man. I heard that. What was that? Revenge uh, of the Nerds. Takashi Toshiro. Yeah, I hear you. It was tough to leave. I mean, I, I think I added and subtracted several times before I settled on something. I did, too. I, I kept winding up with uh, I kept winding up with like 13, sometimes 14 songs. I'm like, man, what the <laughs> dude i can't how am i gonna do this flip a coin you know whatever you know but i finally got it narrowed down to 12 and i'm starting mine off with detroit rock city fantastic opener the whole intro everything jayron all right for me i thought it would be best to kick this off with one of my all-time 
favorite Kiss songs that I think the band themselves don't give this song enough fucking love, and that's Flaming Youth. Awesome. Uh, yeah, it's one like I said, it's one of my all time favorites from the band. I don't know why this isn't something that they disregard when it comes to live shows because I think of all the times I've seen them, I don't think they've ever performed it live. I saw it once I've never heard my, it. on their Rock the Nation tour or their Lost Cities tour or something one time, um, which is a yeah. shame because it's it's a killer song. Damn right it is, and I I've seen them tours too, man. But they must have played something different because they didn't play that one when I went and seen them. You know, they, I, I keep saying I keep saying Rock the Nation, but I don't think that was it. It was the one where they were doing having everybody stand up for the Star Spangled Banner, and they were bringing military people out, and Paul was always bringing a kid out to play guitar on stage during I Love It Loud with him, and it was damn. it was a. Yeah, it was kind of a Lost Cities deal. Definitely, you know, post reunion, it was with Tommy and Eric and everything. But yeah, it's uh, Paul's excuse that I heard uh, in some interview was it doesn't translate well live. And I, I'm, there was 12, 13,000 people at that Minot State Fair that would disagree with you. Place went yeah. nuts when they played that song. Yeah, it seems like anything they don't like to play or you don't, you know, hear them play, it's, it's not going to translate live good. So yeah. there you go. Yeah. All right. My number one side one is going to be one of the best opening tracks I've ever seen them use live on Hot in the Shade. And that is I Stole Your Love. That, but that almost brought down the damn you know, grandstands in Fargo, West Fargo and that outdoor arena. What I mean, nobody, nobody was expecting that song to even be played, let alone open the show. Grabs you right by the throat right away. Just a phenomenal rock anthem that, again, they never really gave love to post-70s, right? I mean, even when they put the makeup back on, they they, I, to my knowledge, this wasn't in any of the sets on Psycho Circus tours or reunions or farewells or any of that stuff. It was on the reunion. Really? It was the. It was the. Uh, it was the. Uh, it was the start off track on the reunion tour. Wow! Not the one I saw. They started with Deuce on the one I saw. Really? Yeah. They yeah. they started I was, with. I was there too. Yeah, Stoke the Love uh, in Charlotte. Uh, Maybe that was one of the songs that they switched in and out of sets. Who knows? Yeah, because Deuce, I think, was right behind it. Okay. If I'm not mistaken, I'd have to backtrack, but I'm pretty sure, yeah, because uh, it was, uh, you know, every time it went, you know, the, the cannon fire or the flash pot, whatever, you know. Yeah, man, it was right. bad ass, dude. Yeah. Okay. Number two, my second track is off of which I'm not going to say, but y'all will know. I'm giving a double shot of Paul with Mr. Speed. Number two, right after Detroit Rock City, we're going into. Yep. Mr. Speed, man. One of my favorite songs of Kiss of all time. Never got to hear them play it, and another one they snubbed for some reason. And to hear the you song, know, it sounds fantastic, but it cannot be that hard to play. So I don't want to hear it, Paul. It can't be. Yeah, can't. and that's and that's and, and going through this again. I always kind of just had rock and roll over on a back burner of my favorite. That that album is unbelievable, and they snubbed most of that album their entire career, with the exception of "I Want You." And Dr. Love, and Ooh. once in a while, you know, Hard Luck Woman or Christine 16 to take yeah. me, Mr. Speed. I mean, all these great songs that they just, yeah, oh, well. Making love. Oh. Yeah, whatever. But they at least gave that some respect in the 70s. Yeah, man. Yeah, I agree, dude. That's one of my, it's my favorite album, I think, the last time we done the, or no, Hotter Than Hell was. I think this was my favorite album cover. Yeah. Yeah. Number two, Day Ron. All right. I went with King of the Nighttime World. 
I think, I mean, that was the second song right after um, Detroit Detroit. Rock City, right? So, yeah. So I think that's a perfect place to put that song. Um, So I started out with a double dose of Paul. Um, I think surprisingly most of the songs on my list, both side one and side two, are going to be Paul songs. Um, But, uh, yes, King of the Nighttime World, another one of my favorites um, from the band. Uh, I just think this song kicks ass. Um, Like I said, and it's a perfect spot uh, where they had it um, in the number two slot. And I think we're all going to be that way as far as the majority being Paul, just for the fact that kind of like they're such a trilogy band, but those first three albums, the bigger, more well-known songs were Gene's. Uh, On these next three studio albums, really the big epic songs are Paul's. So I mean, Paul and Peter, you know, Peter and Paul three, but still, yeah, I I know four, four. That's right. I think like most most of Gene's on these three albums were a little bit more of a slower tempo songs. Um, Slow to mid, yeah. Yep. Oh, most of I mean, them. I, 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 said, I didn't say all. I said most. And yeah. I, I love Gene songs. I mean, I, I think I'm one of the few people who actually really enjoy Sweet Pain off of Destroyer. It's just I almost felt guilted into putting more gene that was original when i originally did this there was like two peter one gene and the rest were paul so i had to really kind of i don't want to put something on that i don't like i like gene songs but paul's songs on these three albums are so strong i could have done 12 songs of just paul i have to give you that i was close (laughs) i was close really came into his own on these second round of albums dude in my opinion the the best that he's ever sounded and yeah I'll, creatures and all that you can't leave all that out but this after a live man when they was doing these studio albums man i think that's when he really and i love the first three don't get me wrong they're fucking fantastic dude but yeah that's just me man yeah Okay, number two, I as well double dose with Paul in Love Gun. I think the song being that intro is so strong coming off a fast song. Yes, Love Gun's a more mid-tempo song, but coming off the power of love of I Stole Your Love, and then the next thing you hear is that da 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 It just kind of keeps you like, okay, this is a heavy album, and it's a great song. Totally right. Culmination of the better approaches for Will Smith. Sorry. And again. Okay, it's on me, right? Uh got number three. three. Six songs on the side, guys. So my number three, Gene shows up with God of Thunder. I know a lot of people ain't crazy about the studio version. I'm one that's not as crazy about the Alive 2 version. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, I love that studio version. I love the creepiness, man. It's, it's yeah, the pure kids Halloween. All that the, kids with the kids, I, I, I enjoy that. I love it, man. Like I said, a lot of people want a damn crack on it. I mean, after all these years, man, really? What What's wrong with that? Yeah, that, as, as a kid, I, that? As a kid, that studio version terrified the hell out of me because it sounded in the beginning like they're torturing children. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like they're torturing children. I mean, it's like, holy Christ. And you and I, and at that point in time, hell, I'm thinking Gene's the devil any fucking way. Holy shit, dude. Yeah. You know, you're freaking uh seven, eight years old, man, and you start hearing that, ooh, that wind whistling and stuff, man. That's badass, dude. I love I've always loved it. I never changed my mind on stuff like that. I think that Bob Ezrin, a lot of people can't stand him. And they don't like Destroyer or the Elder or anything he done. I don't care. He done a masterful job with them. And that's just the way it is, in my opinion. So, God of Thunder, absolutely. You got to have the demon track, and I'm going with that one. Yep. All right. In the third spot on side one, I went with Paul again singing, Do You Love Me? Yeah. Um. Again, I 
Paul is so strong on these three albums. I had a hard time stepping away from his stuff. And again, staying away from the stuff that they play overplay live. Uh, like I said, you're, you're probably not going to find a whole lot uh, of those. I mean, I obviously they have such a huge catalog. It's hard to say that they've never played these live. And obviously some of these they do. Um, but there's just some that I'm just tired of hearing, but not yeah. do you love me. And I'll that's one you. song right there that they played. I've seen them play it a few times, and they hit it to freaking perfection live. Yeah. That's yeah. what I want to hear from them when I go see them, dude. I want to hear that that song played like I hear it. Dang right. All right. My number three seems to catch a little bit. I don't want to say hate, but disdain in the kiss world at least from what i hear and see in podcasts and that's see you in your dreams and i love this song uh way better on rock and roll over than on gene's solo album and the main reason is first of all it's a phenomenal solo but coming out of that when paul starts echoing everything gene's saying in that classic paul power it is so addictive to me that maybe if that wasn't on there, maybe I see this as an okay song, but that I always love it. It's one thing when they trade off and on a verse here, a verse there, but when Paul's just piping it in the background, he can make anybody's song better. Uh, so there you go. See you in your dreams. And Gene does sing these songs. Absolutely. Yes. Fucking fantastic. Yes. Here- it, this is right before he started the uh, I love gun. He really started the demon voice all the time, but he really was clean on that damn rock and roll over album. Yeah, man. Yeah, you think yeah. Of, like love for sale, got love for sale. Should that really be a demon voice? I mean, it, it, it doesn't fit. I don't think it should be. I'm just glad they done it in the studio because it fits the song the way he sings it. Cause I'm a lover of that song, of course. And I love almost human. You know, that's more of a, that fits mm-hmm. more. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, number four on side one. And I think Darren led off with this flaming youth, man. Hell yeah, bro. That's, Parents think I'm crazy, you know, I'm stupid and I'm lazy, man. I mean, that's your, when I, when I heard that song, man, then I just thought, damn, man, that is, we, that's, we could, that's we could damn, identify man. with it, right? Because our parents yeah. back in our generation weren't giving us gold star stickers because we finished our veggies. All right. It was tough love central, man. And they told you your hair looks like shit. You're lazy. Get off your ass and get outside and do some ready. It was tough love, man. Yeah. We yes. were, so so the generation now may not be able to identify how true this song was and how everybody of the 70s and 80s could identify with that. Yeah. Yeah, they definitely identify it with it now. <laughs> but anyway. All right. Um, for me, number four is a song that kicks off the rock and roll over album. I want you. Yeah. Yeah. I, this is such a, I, I just love the mix of tempos, the way it starts off and then just kicks in with that, with that powerful Paul voice. I mean, starts off with that lovey dovey kind of sound where mm-hmm. he's sucking you in. And then it's, I want you. I mean, <laughs> the fucking riff is fucking kick ass so um I mean, and then they bring it right back down after the solo to right that. right so i mean i just love like i said i love the way that that song just changes throughout that way um it, it again a tremendous song perfect kiss song man yep all right my number four another song off a of rock and roll over that really gets little respect from the kiss camp take me uh, again, a killer guitar riff, not as cool as Mr. Speed's, but still very catchy. Um, the sexual innuendos in this song are hilariously clever. Put your hand in my pocket, grab onto my rocket, 
head down in my lap, moonlight shining down on your head. I mean, he's basically saying the obvious. Jack me off, suck my cock, all in the car, but he can get away with it because it's poetic the way he does it. <laughs> Damn right, man. And as a kid, I'm sitting here jamming on this stuff, you know. I'm not yeah. knowing you know, what the hell he's talking about at first, you know, because I didn't pay, you know, I like it like we talked about it before, right? I never was that much of a lyric guy <laughs> until I started getting a little older and could understand. Well, okay, I get it now. I understand. Yeah. You know, I'm surprised my dad didn't snatch that one off of the turntable. Uh, but anyway. um, I don't think my parents stayed in the room long enough to listen to any of my music, so I didn't have an my, issue with my them. My mom could care less what I was listening to as long as right. I was out of her hair. <laughs> He did take my Hotter Than Hell album, though, one time. Interesting yeah. that you say that, though, because my neighbor, and Darren, I think you know Greg Rockenbach. Rockenbach, yeah. Yeah. He was my literal next-door neighbor and my best friend through all of elementary school. We pulled our money and bought Shout at the Devil, the double gatefold, you know, and he saw the fucking satanic pentagrams and imagery and shit, and not kidding you, the day we bought it, she made us throw it away. What? So we decided to have fun and took the album outside and threw it like a Frisbee and had to burn the cover and everything. But we weren't going to get to keep it because she was that offended by it. His mother? You know, yes. And I never understood. Yes. I never understood uh, the album cover. I never knew that album cover was like that. Um, yeah. and because I got the cassette when that came out and it's, it's not the same as the album cover. It's got pictures of all four of them on front of the cassette cover, you know, and of like, and course, she's, later on, in mind, she's looking, she knows what we don't know, right. At her age and our age being what 12 and under or something like that. Uh, she's saying, you know, Helter Skelter. We all know what that was about with the Manson family. Uh, she heard was what made her come in the room. God bless children of the beast. I, I mean, so she was fucking livid and she was the most mild mannered, easy going, you know, but she was, was yeah, she yeah. was not happy. Yeah. <laughs> um, it shout at the devil. Not yeah, with well, okay. I know. But they I don't know. Have kids. At pentagrams on there. That's how are you mind. gonna how are you gonna have an overprotective adult to explain why they're saying God bless children of the beast? Yeah, 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 you're right. Well, you're your right. album's got a giant satanic pentagram on fire. I mean, <laughs> mom, they're just doing it for attention. It's not real. Yeah. You can't pull that off, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's see, number five on side one. This is where A shows up with "Shock Me," man. Freaking one of my favorite Ace songs of all time. Second to Rocket Ride at this point in time in my life, but I still love the song. I love his solo in it. I love the power of the drums. Hey, I've always loved it. So, Shock Me, number five. Getting ready to end off side one on my Rock and Roll Over album. All right. Uh, my number five song is the song that Rob just talked about at number four, and that is Take Me, another Paul Stanley sung perfectly song. Um, I, I, again, like you said, Rob, I don't know why the song doesn't get more credit or, or from the Kiss community or the band themselves. Um, I, I think that this song should be played at every one of their shows. I like it that much. Um, and, and I get their argument, you know, nowadays or towards, you know, the last 20 years, you got 23 albums. Um, you, you can't play it all, but I, I, right. I when I'm, what, what I'm saying, it doesn't get respect is I'm going back to the seventies. Right. I mean, other than release concerts, you know, the rock and roll over tour, I'm sure they played more of these songs, but kiss has been so guilty of, Next album, that last album's mostly forgot. We're going to still play a heavy rotation of the first three albums and show you a couple songs on the next one. And they kept doing that to the point where virtually every album after the first three was ignored 
or thrown a bone for one song. I just don't think they did a good enough job mixing it up through the early years so they couldn't use that argument. Well, people want to hear Deuce and Strutter. And that. Well, because that's all you played. That's all they know. I mean, whatever. The majority of their stuff, it comes off of the debut album and the Damn Destroyer album. Yeah. I mean, that's the majority right there, man. Yeah. All right, my number five, another Gene song that I absolutely love, especially the video. Love them, leave them. This is a badass up tempo rocker from Gene, and the demon voice works so well on this song. You lift your dress, you want to impress, man. I just, another clever song, and it's such a fun song. I, I just, I've always. See, so yeah, when I when I I always loved, I want you, love them, leave them, see you in your dreams, take me and Mr. Speed, and then I pretty much forgot about rock and roll over until now when I realized, man, there's more. Uh, but Damn, bro, yeah, man. this has always been one of my favorites off that album. I want you, Doctor Love, freaking, yeah. Uh, yeah, man, it's just yeah. All right. Yeah, I love Ace's solo in that, and too. He'll do that finger tapping, man. So, hey. There's your Eddie Van Halen argument that everybody wants to talk about. We all know, and I've went back and done a video. Hey, this this classical artist was doing this in the early 1960s. Here's the link to the video. But Ace flat out told you this within the last two years. I did it all the time. Eddie was at front row shows. Maybe he picked something up for me and he got blasted for saying Eddie copied him. He didn't say that. He said, maybe, but he also admits I usually use my pick, but on that video, he's doing the finger. Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah, man. It's bad as hell too. And, uh, copying it's got nothing to do with copying all guitar players freaking take something from somebody man there's nobody original or you just do way. something that you didn't know existed right me and darren yeah. or i don't know if you picked up a guitar scott but i can speak for myself bass i didn't i didn't watch anybody's technique you're just bound to hey what happens if this man i started playing on above the nut on the stock to get that bring 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 I never watched yeah. anybody do it. So if somebody made that famous, now I was copying them when I was 10. I mean, and two. There you go. Yeah. I mean, yeah, so I think I, you're, you're bound to come across something like that just by accident. Yeah. And you're going to experiment anyway. Yeah. You know, what can I do that I ain't seen? Maybe this will work. Blah, blah, blah. You know, yeah. yeah um, okay. All right, my end off track on side one. We're gonna we came in with a blast and we've been moving pretty much full speed ahead and we're gonna end off with a blast making love. Dun, 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 yeah, man, just a powerhouse song. Just from front to back, the drums in the end, man. Peter's just beating them so damn fast, dude. It's like how in the hell is he doing that? And just absolutely spectacular. The lead ace is shredding it. It's almost damn near strange ways shredding almost, man. And yeah, fucking perfect song. Paul just, you know, I'm the one that loves the echoes and the reverb of love, love. Oh, not long. I, yeah, I know you don't, Rob, but damn, I love that song. Making love, number six, end off track on them. First side. All right. My closing song on side one. I know Scott had this on side one. I think it fits great right at the end, and that is Mr. Speed. Another Paul Stanley. So I went six for six with Paul on side one. Wow, um, you did, didn't you? I did. Um, but yes, I mean I'm pretty sure Rob was called that several times, Mr. Speed. Um, <laughs> what <so. an> <laughs> <laughs> Not the way hey. that Paul's thinking about it, but uh, but no, it's a great song. Um, and again, with these three albums, I mean, there are a couple that aren't Stanley on side two, 
Um, but I think he was just, his songs were a little bit more powerful um, on these three albums. Yeah. Fucking classic. Bro. Hi. What's up? Okay, so that's my number six now to close outside one. Ah, uh, we got the Chihuahua Taco Bell. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, man. All right. Everybody loves hello. the animals on this podcast. Say hello. Oh, yes. Say hello. Hey, get me a Chalupa. <laughs> do they still make, do they still make those? Chalupas? Yeah. Yeah. All right, to close off uh, is a magical, magical ending track for a side as you find on Destroyer. Do You Love Me? One of the most badass heavy Paul songs in the 70s. Uh, the, 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 I mean, one of Kiss is few, right? They're not really known. They got a lot of killer, memorable guitar intros and some paul vocal intros but not a lot of killer drum intros other than maybe i love it loud and this song um one one you know immediately what it is and who it's by uh just a fabulous song to end side one awesome yeah so before we go on to side two i am (laughs) going to have to get another beverage and uh i think We'll just do a little five-minute break. I'm going to leave it yeah. film and play oh, some music. Okay. Yeah, just gonna edit it out. Gonna... yeah, no, okay. I'm not going to edit it. I'm going to give everybody. This is a this is a song Thanks. by Mark uh, Mark Keller from the band, formerly from the band Ransom, currently from the band Magnum X. And this is one song that he has demoed. Um, me and Darren are very good buddies with him and the former guys of Ransom. Uh, So I'll give you a little song called Cool Summer Nights while we take a quick, short break. Nice poop Uh crawl. Thank you. You're welcome.
Okay, hope you enjoyed that song from Mark Keller. Uh, we're getting ourselves back together here. And for those of you who don't like this new little format, fast forward when you see us walk. Uh, these are these tend to be longer videos, so we're going to start making sure we're comfortable, well hydrated, and uh, not getting a hernia holding in some urination. So give me some music. That's going to have to be the new formula. Give you something to listen to. Well, we take five. Uh, unless it's, of course, a shorter video. But uh, anyway, yeah. This was a fun but frustrating video to do, uh, picking these songs. Yes, it was, man. Uh, I, you know, and I come out, uh, and not on purpose, I checked it after I finally got my final um songs on here i had uh let's see five six seven eight nine ten eleven i think i damn near came out um let's see one two three four five i had five from destroyer one, two, three, four from Rock and Roll Over, and one, two, three, three from uh, Love Gun. So it was it shocked, it shocked me because I had five from Rock and Roll Over, and believe it or not, what was always my favorite mel makeup album, I have one, two songs off of Destroyer. And I love the whole album, but kind of in the vein that Darren's doing, I'm not going to put on songs that I've heard so much that I could skip it, you know, uh, yeah. nowadays. So, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, and again, to anybody who thinks we're dissing anything, I at least me and Scott pretty much love every song on these three albums. Darren seems like he enjoys most. So, I mean, nobody is saying anything we don't put on here is terrible or not, you know, great <laughs> hits worthy. It's just not our favorite at the moment. Yeah. You know, it could change two weeks from now. Who the hell knows? That's basically what I did was left all my favorite songs off the three albums. But like I said, I had to clip a few too. So there you go. You know, you got to okay. do what you got to do. Side two, track one, Scotty. Side two, track one is we're going to start off with. Oh, you. oh yeah man can't leave that one off dude that is probably my favorite kiss song of all time at this point in time has been for a while and if i introduce anybody to this band that's the song i tell them to listen to you want to hear some of them take that one start out with i want you man and uh wow just absolutely phenomenal breakdown freaking tempo lead and coming back into it man with just that bombastic i want you and just just fucking rocking all the way through except for when paul's doing his his uh, acoustic like mellow sound you know awesome right. great song Derek. all right i wanted to start off side two with a bang so i went with love gun oh Yes, just uh, it's a killer intro. Um, and uh, again, it's all around great song. And I know this is it might not fit with staying away from the popular ones, but how can you leave Love Gun off if you're talking about these three albums? Right. Yeah, there are some of them that are just undeniable. Um, I have one. Well, technically two undeniables that I did leave off intentionally as much as I didn't want to just to give some love to other songs that I would love to have seen be a staple. So speaking of one of those songs, 
Uh, my number one on side two gets no love, no respect from the band or KISS fans, you know, in comment sections or fellow KISS podcasters. And that is tomorrow and tonight. Uh, yes, Scott, yeah. the monk females, the chipettes, who you <laughs> love so much. <laughs> Singing along in this song. I love the intro. I love the cocky arrogance, the way Paul sings the verses in this. And it the, the breakdown, it is a classic sing-along anthem song that I have always loved since I first heard it as a kid. And I've always loved to this day. Um, so there you go. Yeah, I love it too. So I ain't nothing I can say about it. Maybe the chipmunks, but yeah, yeah the song's better. But the song's so good. It, yeah, In case you haven't good. you haven't watched the old videos, his problem with this is the girl singers that start singing along sound like they're on helium, almost like chipmunks. Yes. <laughs> I wonder if they done that on. Did I, you reckon they done that on purpose, man? They, I, I, I I really don't know. I mean, I, who knows? I can't know either, man. Uh, but it's not bad. I love the song. So, all right, number two on side two, and definitely a song that I don't know how much hate i've heard for the song but i don't never really hear anything good about much or even brought up or hell they even played it got love for sale and it's one of my, I, i've I, never seen live footage of that ever or heard i, I should love say. this song i didn't care much for it when i was a kid i kind of ignored it a little bit but as the as I grew and got older and started listening to it more, man, it is a great song. I, I, I just imagine how much better it would have been if they would have took the acoustics out of it and made it all lead. It's still great, but Ace's solo, man, is fucking fire in this damn song, man. A lot of these songs, man. And Gene, even though he does get a little bit uh, in this song, he does it very, very well. Studio wise, but, but, you're, but you're right on this one because I never really, I didn't have an opinion one way or the other. You know, when you're a kid, or at least for me, when I was in, I'm talking elementary school, you kind of just pick the needle up and play the songs you want. Um, as frustrating and maddening as that was, uh, and that was always one that I just skipped because it wasn't power kiss, you know, back then, it wasn't flashy. But the more I listened to it as an adult, I could really appreciate the style he was going for here yeah it's different than most on this album but man it, it's got a good hook the verses are sung so well um Damn right. it's just it's, it's just different especially coming from gene especially in the makeup days but man it's a good song and the chorus is great like i said if you you know if you've kind of scratched your head about this song over time Put the headphones on and turn that so much up wide open and just listen to it. And then you can kind of come to more of a conclusion about, you know, uh, headphones has changed everything for me, man. It so, helps you focus. It helps you. And there's a lot of nuances that maybe aren't heard, you know, on a loud stereo without it because it, it focuses more. I go back to that mechanical resonance album with Tesla. There was a lot of stuff going on that you yeah. would have never picked up on if you weren't listening to headphones. Yeah. And for me, my, my first experience with it as a kid, and I'm thinking it was like around fifth or maybe sixth grade. And that was the um, dude looks like a lady by Aerosmith. And I mean, the way that I went from left to right left. I mean, that yeah. was my first experience with that type of like production. And I thought that was cool as hell. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's on every ACDC album. It, and, and if you got, okay, ACDC is a good example. You got, you got a legendary rhythm player in Malcolm and you got Angus. Each guitar is in a different ear through a yeah. lot of that stuff. And God, that, is so cool. that is so cool. Yes. Yes. Shot down in flames on highway to hell. Da -da 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 -da. And then Angus. 
da, 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 da. yeah, man, it, you're right. You hit it right on the head, man. They do it a lot. Okay, so where are we at now? I forgot. Uh, uh, I, think, I, think. I think it's me for the number two song. Okay. Uh, so yeah. side two, track two, Paul Stanley singing Making Love. Yes. Yeah, we got another fan. Yes. Um, Damn yep. right. I mean, I just... I don't think I'd actually... I mean, I know that I'd heard the song before, but I it's been a while since I've heard that song, and then having listened to this again quite a few times over the last... Well, for the most part, it was all today. I mean, that song kept on sticking out over and over every time that I played it, and I think the first time I went through my notes, it probably came in at number 14 or number 13, but... I mean, it was easy to move this one up and then just jettison something that's been overplayed. So it's a great song. I'll say this about it. It's not on my list to no one's surprise that watches this. I don't hate the song. I, I despise the way I love the chorus when he does it live on a live too, because he just making love, love instead of that, love, 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 like he does on the studio. That's the only part I don't like. But I'll tell you what's awesome about this song is that massive drum and cymbal hit with yeah, to start the thing off. Man, that is badass. Uh, so, yeah, I can see why that grabs people. I really can. And that real. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah. That's, that's probably the heaviest song on all three albums. I mean, I'd have to diagnose it. To just to make sure, but damn, man, that is. If you're not fun. talking about evil like God of Thunder, you're just talking about a heavy metal sound. I'm talking sound. speed yeah. and just all the way yeah. to the end. No slow tempos or nothing in that song. Yeah, man. All right, my number two, you both already have, and it is I Want You, a tremendous, as Darren touched on, up and down, uh, misleading song, if you will. I always love these songs by any band, even if it's not a great song. I love the, oh, you think this is a ballad, huh? <laughs> and they smack you in the face. Uh, just so happens this one is fabulous. Aces, fills, and I say fills. I mean, the solos are one thing, but that dang, dang, that he puts it after everything Paul yeah. sings in the verse. It is so goddamn cool. And as far as the studio album goes, that breakdown is tremendous. But the studio album, when it comes back in with that flanger on the guitar, man, is that badass. I just, again, like Scott said, probably one of my favorite, if not the favorite, at least for me, makeup kiss songs. So. Fucking awesome, bro. Yeah. Number three on side two. All right. Time to chill out, hang back, and just let the air out, man, for a couple of minutes. Beth, Peter Chris, man. I know I snubbed all his other songs so I could at least put one of his songs on here. I got Ace on here once, too. Um, but, yeah, man. It, it, well, Ace could only be on here once, but um, I went with the ballad because I'm one of the lovers of this song. This is my favorite Kiss ballad of all time. I've always loved it since I was a kid. I think it's real from the heart. I think it's it, Peter sings it so damn well. And what Bob Ezrin done to it, man, because he's the one that's really responsible for how this song turned out. Yeah. Fucking fantastic. And not because it saved the album or shut the band to another level, man. It's just the song itself I've always got. You know, it. The, there's a method to the madness on Destroyer that a lot of people don't get. And, and a lot of people do i'm one that does uh i understand you know the violin well, and the, not a thunder and I, I understand where that comes from the disdain from diehard original kiss fans and when i say original i mean older than like probably around your age you know mid to later 50s than be just being 50 those years i've said 
not being many make a big difference, especially if you started in your childhood, right? So if I started at five, I would, you know, that was 1978. So if someone five years older than me started at five, he's starting at the beginning. And I understand this was polished. You could say overproduced, whatever you want to say on destroyer going forward compared to the first three. However, what they don't, what they need to understand is those first three albums did not sell. Doesn't matter. I'm not saying they weren't good. I'm saying they needed this change sonically to become competitive. If not, they probably die. If, if they don't, if they come back out with something in the vein of the first three albums after a live unleashes, what is to come kiss mania, they're going to tap back out. It was, everybody talks about how alive broke them and maybe, but if you don't have this album to follow it up, it's a whole lot of hoopla for nothing because nobody cared about those first three albums. And to so, make it even crazier, if you don't have that song. Yes. I'm that not a bad fan, but I appreciate they, that it made this band become a mainstream versus a dark, dangerous, you know, underground type band. I mean, you yeah. got to sometimes appreciate something your band does, even if you don't like it. Like you've said with I Was Made For Loving You, as much as you hate it, you appreciate that it kept your band going. Without that putting them back in popularity, they probably disband and are gone. So, I mean, sometimes you got to suck up something you don't like if it keeps your band relevant. Yeah, man, it's amazing. I never knew that for years, man. I didn't know that Destroyer was tanking until they started playing Beth on the radio. Yeah. And then, and that's and that's why they, they didn't have Beth and then and Detroit Rock City to go on on the flip side. And they come back yeah. out with another dress to kill. I mean, yeah, we like it, but it didn't sell. And they would have, oh, check out this live album. Okay, so they'd go see them live if anybody books them anymore because the next album goes in the toilet again. I mean, and then so they yeah, have to it, it, rock and roll over out to get that grittier sound. And damn, man, for a rushed album, motherfucker, you know, it's uh, damn, that's it's for two years. You know, both of them came out in 76, man. I mean, that's yeah. fantastic. So, yeah, man. Okay, Darren, you did your number two. Is that where we are? No, I'm on number three. Yeah, we're uh, okay. Third, so, uh, third, so, I no, I'm going for number three. What was your number three, Scott? Beth? Beth. Beth. Okay. So I also chose to slow it down for the first time, really, um, other than the song that tries to trick you. Uh, <laughs> but And I also went with a Peter Chris song, but I went with Hard Luck Woman instead of Beth. Good uh, job. So uh, it's... Uh, it's been a favorite of mine um, from the early days of listening to Kiss. I, I think Peter Chris sings this one excellently. I mean, I think we could have found a better name than Rags um, in the yeah. song. But other than you know, that, I didn't, through my entire childhood, I thought he was saying red, like calling a redhead red. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I didn't know what the hell he was saying. But it's but I but I like the song. Um, and again, I think it was a good time to to finally slow it down a little bit, throw in one of their slow songs before we I finish it out with three harder tunes. Um, but yeah, hard luck woman at number three on side two. All right, you're with the majority on that too, man. Most Kiss fans I've heard all over YouTube and everything else that's their favorite. Uh, Peter yeah. Chris Ballard, man. Yeah, I'm not, it's, 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 it's not my favorite Kiss ballad, but it's my favorite Peter Chris ballad. It, uh, with Kiss, with Kiss, because if you're talking outside of Kiss, Blue Moon over Brooklyn is the greatest masterpiece he's ever fucking done, as far as a mid to yeah. slow ballad. That's uh, good. Yeah, and I'm not the world's biggest uh, Beth fan, but I appreciate what it did for them. Um, I like the piano in it, right? Um, but like I said, it's it's not my favorite of their songs. Yeah. I think why Beth just doesn't hit me is because I'm a guitar audible guy. 
the piano's beautiful to have on in the background and symphony strings. I love that. But the my favorite version of Beth is off of Kiss Meets the Phantom, the movie, because they're playing it on acoustics. And it sounds so much better to me. But that's just my preference. Yeah, that's not bad on there either, man. I like that too. Until until their powers start getting zapped and they start playing on a tune. <laughs> Yeah, what a horrible, what a horribly cheesy movie. But I remember There's seeing that as a kid. It, I remember seeing that as a kid, and me and my best friend at the time, Monica. I mean, we ran around and played Kiss because yeah. we saw Phantom of the or Kiss Meets the Phantom. Yeah, uh, as a I kid, that was the shit, man. Oh, it was I fucking cool. If I it's have so people cool. over who are not Kiss fans, and that came on TV, you couldn't see me shut it off quick enough out of embarrassment. <laughs> Really? <laughs> that's that's not that nowadays. Yeah, I can I can cheesily enjoy it now, it's but I so wouldn't want to have to answer to non Kiss fans right now. Yeah, when that it's, comes it's great. It's so fucking stupid and so I mean, corny. At one point in time, you've got a black Ace Freely for Christ's sakes. I know. <laughs> it's and, unreal. And all I, Paul, I think I've only ever Paul seen it and and all that fake hair on his, on his chest. <laughs> <laughs> you only seen that once, Darren? I think I only saw it the one time as a kid. Yeah, I, I, I actually, it I actually recorded it on VHS as it aired when I was a kid. So I, I watched it so many times that tape just got wore the fuck out. The tracking couldn't even help it, you know, the tracking setting. But I've still got the VHS of it, you know, the Phantom of the Park VHS. Which and one now? Because they have yeah. two. They have Kiss Meets the Phantom and Phantom of the Park. Kiss yeah, I got the, is the kiss real all one. Yeah. yeah, the the real one. Yeah, I got I got both of them, man. Yeah. Okay. So my number three, and I think I'm the only one who's not slowing down this album. Uh, the very opposite, in fact, the title is Mister Speed. One of the first guitar riffs, along with Crazy Train. That when I got my first electric guitar was my mission to learn how to play the intros of both of them frustrated me to the point where I wanted to break the guitar. Uh, but it's such a masterful guitar intro. One of the best guitar intros kisses ever had. Uh, so props to Mr. Freely for that or Fraley Lewis, whatever. Uh, but uh, yeah, great song. And number three on side two. We love you, Lewis. <laughs> Lois. I always call him Lois. I know. Right. I'm sure he loves that. <laughs> okay. Number four on side two. I think both of you guys have touched on this one, so not bad. The drum intro and the dun, dun, do you love me? Oh man, my favorite song on the reunion and farewell tours that they played. Fucking perfection, man. They played it to perfection. It sounded almost like he was listening to it on. It changed nothing, man. I, I loved it. I still love it to this day. And one of my favorite songs on Destroyer, period, man. Yeah. Love it. All right, side two, track four. Rob has already talked about this song. It has a killer intro. Dynamite vocals by Paul Stanley, and that's Tomorrow and Tonight. Yes, someone else who likes my song. I love it too, man. Yes. Yep, good song. All right, my number four. Um Definitely not slowing it down, but I, I view this as a change up versus the heavy, aggressive rock that the rest of my album has been. And that is Plaster Caster, kind of a more smooth rock song versus your hard edge stuff like a lot of these songs. But one of my favorite songs as a kid and until, you know, I'd say what unplugged a song that never was talked about never well you could never hear it live or anything and then since then i think they realized how much people love it now it's played on every unplugged show on the cruises they put it in live shows uh just a fabulous song the meaning 
course, as a kid, I had no idea what they were talking about. It wasn't until I think Kiss Exposed or one of those home videos where I heard Gene explain where that came from. And then I watched another documentary of the Butter Queen, this famous groupie who was the one doing these casts. And so that just makes it all the much better. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, and actually, there was a show. Uh, I don't know if you ever watched it. I remember I borrowed it to you, Darren, at one time back when you were still in Lincoln, uh, coupling. Oh, There's an episode that. on there where one of the 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 players that one of the guy that's considered the sex guy, Patrick, uh, they had some woman made plaster casts of things, and she turned it into a for sale, you know, dildo right. in the stores yep. and stuff. No, so I who knows, that. If, I who that knows if they got that being a British uh, comedy, if they got that from these American metal groupie stories or not. I don't know, but I don't know. It's the UK version of Friends. It was hilarious. Yeah. 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 Okay. All Scott. right. I love the way uh I love the way Ace's guitar sounds on that song, man. It's kind of got a different yeah. vibe on that song. And I love the really I love the bass. That's another thing you don't really get with a lot of kiss songs is the heavy bass. I know, man. And I love that too, man. I love the bass too. Um, over the years, I really like it more. Um, number, oh, well, this is the fifth track on side two. Yeah. Yep. Well, we got to pull out the doctor. Love, man. My I was wondering song. when you were going to put that in. I ever heard by the band. This is what pretty much was introduced to me when I first heard the band. This was the first song, and I've loved it ever since. I think it's absolutely spectacular. It's Gene singing at his best, the lead, Peter's drums, everything just great. Even the chick backup singers in this band are phenomenal. It sounds actually good in this song and when i first heard it years ago i didn't know is that them just toning down and singing like that but no it's actually chicks and they do it phenomenally um absolutely great song man fucking perfect song hard song heavy riff dun, 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 dun. i mean it gets heavy man and peter's feel line in the middle yeah man Doctor what i wish they would have done with that studio track is like he does it live now and ends with that i am the doctor of love and they do the musical down to his tone i mean that i think would have been awesome to end it on the album instead of that that's the 70s was really bad about that just faded out shit and i, I did like a lot man ah, yeah man. and it's not it's not just kiss it's it's everybody and I oh, like man. a song with it with a pronounced ending. I mean, but I do too. You know, That's yeah. I choose that myself, man. Yeah. And my doctor love story is when I it was my very first apartment by myself um on Thayer. Was that where it was that Rob? Thayer? By the eagle that I hit or yes. almost hit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but you your dad had come to town and I believe it was uh, you were getting your Firebird. I think that was Trans Am. Was it the TA? Okay, I couldn't yep. remember. If it was the TA or the yep. Trans Am? Yeah, the Trans Am is the one I ran Trans up Am. over the poles and destroyed the radiator. Yeah. Um, but wow. I, you, you called me or what? It, yeah, cause I'm pretty sure I didn't have a cell phone. You called me and said that you would be on your way soon, <laughs> um, to pick me up so we could go cruising in the TA. So I threw in smashes, thrashes, and hits in my CD player, and I hit random. I told myself, when Dr. Love plays, when that song finally comes on, Rob's going to be pulling up. And it took forever, because, the, and the very last song to play was Dr. Love. And as soon as it started, I saw the Trans Am pull around the corner and pull up right in front of the apartment building. And say, like, there he is. Um <laughs> The doctors unfortunately, unfortunately, that song did not make my cut. Uh, you know, the sad on a side note, the sad thing is, if I'd have never 
gave that back to my dad for the 88 firebird in exchange that would be worth fucking over 20 goddamn grand right now that was a sweet car but it's just because the, any of those camaro the metal body camaros and trans ams man you're fucking you're gonna pay over 10 grand for one that's not running i mean it's wow the, the things you take for granted man right do you guys realize that you are sitting on the podcast with a guy that and you're not going to believe me i know it's going you're going to be ah uh -huh, yeah right whatever uh that's time travel yeah all right there's me in a saloon in kansas city It does look Actually, like you. Uh, uh, 17, I think. I can't remember the exact date, whatever. And here's... You and Marty McFly? Me, I, was, I, I, I lived through this. That's why I'm still here. A, uh, I was a Confederate soldier, man. Son of a bitch. I can believe that. So, yeah, man. Uh, but I don't tell many people that. So, anyway, they don't believe me. Can you, can you, can you do it again? It just happened randomly, man. I just wound up in this time about, what, 1969, 1970, and I've been stuck here for a while. So, yeah, it's crazy, right? You know, uh, <laughs> what's that show they, they come you out think with? You would have had uh, a better hairdo then. I mean, yeah, like I did actually had some, some hair, man, and some pretty cool chicks, too, dude. I mean, I. <laughs> I wish they would send me. You were, back, you were into know? chicks one time. <laughs> What's that? You, you were into chicks once, once back in the day, or what? Once, yeah, man, yeah, I know. Yeah, I just they tried to put me in that liberal train, you know, and no. uh, yeah, that did that didn't work right there, brother. I just didn't. No, uh, it didn't matter how much they tried to flip flop me on that one. It just didn't work. The green hair and the, the guys holding hands and all that. Nah. I just I couldn't take that man. Right. I didn't even try it. So there you go. What's what's that show? Uh, used to come on. Uh, the guy quantum, quantum travel. Quantum yes. leap. That's it. There you go. Awesome show. Yeah. All right. They made that up for me. They didn't put me in the credits. Gotcha. They thought I was psycho, so they didn't believe my story. <clears throat> Side two, track five, the only Gene Simmons song on this album for me <laughs> makes it wow. partly, partly because of Ace. I didn't even realize that until you said it. Uh, got Love for Sale. I know Scott already wow. had it on his. Wow. But yes, Got Love for Sale. Gene Simmons, that Ace solo in this song is tremendous. Uh, but yes, that is the Gene Simmons song that I chose. It hurt me to leave off Almost Human, man. I had to drop that at the last minute, too, because I've grown to love it. So, yeah, man. All right. Well, so far, number five, side two, I am the only one to give badass Peter any love. Hooligan. Uh, <laughs> very heavy song. Um, this edged out baby drive. I love ace's wine guitar on baby dry that dang 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 but overall hooligan is a much stronger song uh, i this is peter being peter to me i think peter and ace are more suited since they both came from the streets especially peter ace's hard times and stuff i like it when they're singing about you know the hood tough life or it suits them more than space or Peter crying about some chick on a ballad. I love it when these two guys keep it street real, and Hooligan is a great song. Yeah, Baby Driver's another one that got cut from mine. It was almost yeah. there, dude. I, Hooligan yeah, almost man, it, it's, Hooligan it's tough, almost. man. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm ending off my album with... And I, I know one of you have. I don't know if both of you have this one, but 
what they started off with on the reunion and hot in the shade i stole your love man yeah that was my number one what on side one what a way to yeah. go out man coming in bombastic really bombastic all the way through except for one tempo change for me but <coughs> uh, great song one of my favorite kiss songs of all time man but one of the best lead off track songs dude they would really and one of the fight. funniest tracks to a any movie ever where the, yes. the, the, the mom in Detroit Rock City thinks she's going to put the carpenters on and slams the copy or tea in her face when I stole your love hits. Hilarious. Yeah, the carpenters, man, they got tuned up, didn't they? God, <laughs> man, dude, I love that, man. That was a great movie, man. Great yep. movie, man. And a great song, The Echoes, was absolutely outstanding. Very, very, very powerful. And Ace's lead with the echoes too. It's just perfect, dude. I, I love even the tambourine or whatever they're using. Yeah, works in this freaking song, man. Everything yeah. they did at one time seemed like it fit. Um, uh, perfect, great album. All right. Well, I'm not sure how Scott screwed up his ending so much because I went with "I Stole Your Love" to end up <laughs> end up this album. <laughs> No, you're right. I thought it was a great song to put at the end. Um, again, come in with a bang with Flame and Youth, go out with I Stole Your Love. I just thought that was a perfect way to to leave the audience, uh, the listening audience, wanting more by ending with that song. Yes. So, so Darren starts his album with Flame and Youth, ends it with I Stole Your Love. I start my album with I Stole Your Love, and I'm ending with Flame and Youth. <laughs> I think another anthem <laughs> basically summing up the album. It's amazing how we flipped that. Um, no secret, one of my favorite all-time songs and one of the most excuse, unexcusable disses by Paul and the rest of them for 50 years. Um, we can't yeah. change, do nothing to change that. Unlike the guys on three sides, I happen to love that Calliope playing as they break down in the middle while they're singing along in that breakdown. That Calliope makes the song to me. Uh, if they would have used this as a staple, I would have been fully in support of just a sample playing of that Calliope while they're singing. It is there's something magical about some of these things, like you said, the tambourine or whatever, and I stole your love. Some of those non-metal things really really help emphasize a metal song and and that has always been my favorite part of the song since i was a kid i'd pull the needle i mean we're not talking about hit and rewind and stop i'd, I'd pick the needle up and put it back 30 seconds just to keep playing that middle because of that calliope sound i thought it was awesome so there yes. you go yeah my favorite song on love gun too man and and I will go on record here. I'm not speaking for either one of these gentlemen. My sophomore album, I prefer 10 out of 10 times to my debut album. I am in the camp that the first three albums are great. The next three are way better. So there you go. That's my opinion. That the, I, I can I can go on that, man. As far as all three of them together and all three of these together, yeah, this is when I came into the band. And yeah, man, I, yeah, like you said, those first three albums did not sell until live came out, man. When they came out with these, dude, they started selling and they were the biggest band in the freaking world by the time they got well, when I just look at it, I don't know how your guys' deal was, but when we made that first album, yeah, I had to leave three to four songs off. I mean, this was torture. I mean, I yeah, could well, literally make at least one other full album with all the songs I left off yeah. and be happy with. It. So, I mean, yeah. there's just, it's just so much stronger for me, these songs versus the first three albums. To me, the first well, three yeah. albums, I would never... I would never call Makeup Kiss filler. Uh, you get into the 80s, there's quite a bit of filler. But those first three albums have more filler-esque songs, in my opinion, than the second three do. Yeah. I would agree with you. There were some, definitely some strong songs in those first three. Um, but it was easy, easier to leave some of those off, where I did have yeah. more yeah. of an issue 
um, with with making of the sophomore album. Right. Yeah. I'm going to see which ones none of us picked. I don't think anybody picked Ladies Room, which I would, I love that song. Uh, I don't think anybody picked. No. Baby Driver, did anybody pick that? Nope. I, be, I almost had it, and I had taken it off. I did, too. Those are the only two off of Rock and Roll Over that did not get picked now to Love Gun. I didn't hear a Christine 16. Nope. And I didn't hear a almost mm. human. No. Nope. Yep. And then she, and then she kissed me. Those yep. three were not on uh, our lists. And on Destroyer. Great expectations. Yeah, great expectations. Sweet, Sweet pain. pain. Shout Sorry. it out loud. Yep. Three on that one. That a yeah. Rock and so roll party. Pretty much. Yeah, man. Even yeah. kill almost. So yeah, we come. Yeah, most of the albums were represented decently. Absolutely. Like I said, mine was five, four, three. And I'm a lover more of rock and roll over out of these albums, but Five that's getting that way, that's getting that way for me too. Now. Yeah, I'm getting that way too. Yeah, I own uh, of these three. I only have rock and roll over on vinyl. I haven't purchased the other two. Okay. Yeah, those are good ones so, to have. Update for uh, Mr. Jerry Companion. We did bark at the moon. It was a fabulous episode, and the whole thing got trashed due to technical difficulty. Oh, I'm you Scott. To say? Go ahead, Scott. Yes, I want to say this because I know I was trying to remember to say something about that. Let's do a Diary of a Madman or something, man, since that one didn't go through because. You know, we may do Bark at the Moon in another year or two down the road, but we know what each other likes off of that album now. And, yeah, we yeah. did a long oh, version. Of it. And I actually it thought a- the episode went really well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it, oh, it yeah. would be tough to recreate yes. some of the things that we, yeah. that we went into uh, and, and have it come off as looking like it was spontaneous. Authentic. Yeah, right? I, I mean, it, it would be forced at this point. So, unfortunately, Jerry, yes, uh, we will choose one of the other albums. Um, yeah. Even though, like you I said, we did try. Know. We spent last night uh, recording that, and unfortunately, because of all of Scott's Screaming. problems that he had, it, we had to scrap it. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, and uh, um, did you which, did you listen to anything on the new tattoo? Huh? I did. Uh, I did give that a once over while waiting uh, for my child's bus today, and I will pass on that album. Thank you, okay. me too, because I'll, I'll yeah. tell you, the opening track is fucking fabulous. Yeah. I mean, really good. But the rest of it, yeah. I'm not going to say it's bad because it's not. It's just one of those, it's just 50-50 to me, man. Yeah. There it's, just yeah. Not, it's not worth it. It really isn't for me. No, like I, so love, uh, I love First Band on the Moon, and believe it or not, I was listening to it today, and the song that always gets stuck in my head, because I haven't listened to it in a long time, is White Punks on Dope, man. <laughs> oh, you like that? I can't get it out. Uh, damn it. I'll be going around some white punk songs. There were, there were two songs that I wish that would, would have really come to fruition. I wish that they were the first band on the moon and they never came back. Oh, and then, shit. And then the one about, was it, Fist to the Teeth or something about teeth. Uh, <laughs> hey, fake is badass. Fake. Fake was okay. Fake was okay. But yeah. really, Vince really, or Everybody but Mick really needs a punch to the face to their teeth. So, <laughs> oh uh, god. Okay, and so I, we got I, I, Diary of a Madman. We got Diary of a Madman coming now. We've if got that's Megan the one y'all want to do, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, okay. I told you, Bark, Bark at the Moon was the only one I thought was lacking any kind of strength, it, other than the song Bark at the Moon. 
it was all just kind of eh. but i'm looking at the tracks on the other ones even before listening to the whole albums i knew right away that those were the better albums so yeah uh, we also have megadeth's countdown to extinction will be interesting it's kind of heavy for this podcast uh are we putting anything else kiss on tap or are we going to let it sit until we do something else and come up with an idea we'll put it on tap and we'll get to it when we get to it okay All it right. is time for side four of alive two and the solo albums that will be Love our it. next kiss Nine, album four and solos now uh 12 songs 12 songs okay there we go so that will, will happen any, will anybody have anything off of peter's album we um, don't know we don't know we'll see we'll have to I, wait and see man i mean how many tracks are on paul's album nine it's or ten. your choice no, yeah i just take no, I, that's, I the could, oldest, that's the only I solo the I entire have. album on here with a couple of the ones off of Alive Two and be done. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll I'll be more fair than that. <laughs> hey man, you don't leave Ace out. Ace got no, that song. I, it's hey, yeah, believe it's me. Nice. If a song Gene's got a couple songs. Gene's yeah. got a couple songs that I like, but like I said, it doesn't matter what y'all like. Honestly, you know, it's your album. It's your album. I could pretty much bet house money right now that Peter will not be represented. I bet the farm on it. Yeah. Yeah. There's what? no way I'm putting anything on that album on my yeah. There's no way. Okay. All right. So no, there you go. We got Kiss Alive. Well, Kisses would be senior album. What? Uh, that's the kind of sugar Papa likes. Yeah. You go ahead. You go ahead and put it on yours. Track one. <laughs> Lead off track. <laughs> I mean, it okay, wouldn't surprise so. me. You did have Beth on your sophomore album, so. Yeah. All right. So another Kiss album, Ozzy's Diary of a Madman and Megadeth's Countdown to Extinction and eventually the Filthy 15. And until next time, unless you guys got anything else you need to get across. Oh, that good. filthy fifteen, man. I was going over it again today. This is this is going to be interesting because, damn, was they tripping on peyote or something? You know, I mean, it really. It was it a yeah, and, and that, I did a little that, that, reading. That's really what's it. holding me up, right? Because I I want to put together like a good intro as before we get into yes, yeah. and give them a backstory on how it all started because. Tipper Gore started this movement, but it was three other, you know, dykes posing as straight women married to liberal douchebags. Uh, it, it's always a white woman who gets offended by all this shit, right? While they're blowing their mailman, like they're some saint. Right. Uh, but yeah, yeah, give a backstory on it, uh, why it existed, how it existed. It was all female senators, wives and shit, just typical hypocrites. But yeah, it'll be an interesting video. Too much time on her hands with nothing else to do. Yeah. Yeah. We're getting it. We're getting it. Yeah. Okay. Until next time, everybody. Thanks for watching.